know that there's shows like The Doctors and Dr. Oz and things like that, and they talk about herbs and herbal medicine. Yes. You know, on some of their segments. Yes. What are your thoughts on those things? Or those shows, well, should I say? You know, there are there are pros and cons. Um, the, the thing that I love about Dr. Oz is that he is introducing herbal medicine to America. Uh, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because there are so many people who don't understand what herbs do, um, what they are, um, how to use them, and, you know, all the wonderful things that they actually help. So I think that that's great and I applaud Dr. Oz for bringing that awareness um, to um, his audience. The thing that I'm not so crazy about is that most of the time Dr. Oz will recommend um, a pill, a one-hit wonder. So He'll tell everyone to go out, hey, this is good for, this pill is good for weight loss. Mm. And thousands of people go online to try to order this particular product for weight loss. Now, the problem that I have with that as an herbalist is there is not one thing that's going to work the same way for everyone. And we haven't taken the whole person into consideration. We are giving people the microwave answer. Go out and take this pill and you won't have to change your lifestyle. You won't have to change what you're eating necessarily. Swallow this pill and you will lose weight. It's magic. It's magic. Poof. And that's what we want. Mm -hmm. You know, most people who want to lose weight want to do it quickly. They don't really think about the number of years or months that it took them to get to the place where they need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Well, we live in a society of immediate gratification. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and most people don't understand that changing the lifestyle goes along with using supplements, mm -hmm. um, with exercising. So some people will say, well, I'm on a diet, but they're not exercising, or they're not hydrating, or they're not taking in foods that will support weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, they're not eating the things that um, will help their bodies to digest and metabolize and mostly because they don't know and so my job as an herbalist is to sit down with a person and explain to them how to support their bodies and their overall health while trying to reach their goals right but now are they going to end up going from like a dresser full of prescription drugs to a dresser full of herbs no Okay, where, you know, I'm taking these, you know, five pills and now I got to take th these five pills. Right, right. So that's kind of what happens with Dr. Oz. Mm -hmm. Because Dr. Oz, you know, I, I have people call me all the time and say, oh, I need to go get some of this because I saw it on Dr. Oz. And I have friends who I have visited and I see all these bottles in their kitchens because they've seen these things on Dr. Oz. Um, that is not the best approach. Okay. That's not the best approach. Uh, you know, when people come in for an herbal consultation, again, we're looking at the whole person. So say you were uh, wanting to lose or needing to lose um, 50 pounds. I don't need to lose that much, but I do need to lose some. Go ahead. <laughs> well, okay, so, so we're... we're let's, this let's, is, say, let's, let's, say, let's say 10 to 20. 10 to 20. Okay. Well, well, we need a bigger number. Okay. We well, need a bigger we, number. We, so I'm this not is the person strictly then. hypothetical. Okay. So say you, your goal was to lose 50 pounds, and, you know, you had unexplained weight gain. You know, oh, my goodness, you know, I've gained all this weight, you know, can't figure out what's going on. So if you came in to see me, we'd start talking about, of course, we would talk about your diet. But we would also talk about your, your lifestyle, your, your stress level. We would talk about, um, you know, your level of activity. And then we take a look at how you're hardwired. We look at how well your digestive system is working. Um, so there are a number of things that we would actually have to take into consideration before I'd hand you a bottle of some fat burning pill. Mm -hmm. now, um, what if your weight gain was because you were not digesting your food properly? So that fat burner, is that really going to address your problem?
No. no. Right. So what if your weight gain was, um, was coming from your stress or the fact that you were eating in the middle of the night? Mm. Why are you eating in the middle of the night? has to do with what you had during the day or before you went to bed. So what if you were getting up at, you know, two in the morning and raiding the refrigerator? What's the reason for that? So we'd be talking about, well, what did, what did you eat, Kevin? I was dreaming about ice cream Because you were dreaming cake. about ice cream and cake. <laughs> or, or maybe you had a, a nutrient deficient day. Mm -hmm. You know, you were eating things that had a bunch of empty calories that were, were not nutritious. And then at night, you're hungry. You, you go to bed full, stuffed. But you're, you're, you're still hungry because your body is asking for nutrients. It's asking for what it really needs instead of the empty calories and the sugar and the salt that you've been craving and munching on all day. So you're still going to be hungry because you haven't gotten any quality food. So you're overeating, um, overfed, and malnourished. Okay, can I go off on a tangent a yes. little bit? Yes. Because you and I had a conversation before talking about my sleep. Yes. And not getting a lot of sleep and those kinds of things. And how the body heals itself during sleep. Can you go into that a little bit? A little for, bit. For the viewers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just because I know you were like different parts of the body at different times at night do different things. Yes. Okay. So, so we were talking about your circadian rhythm. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that's what we were talking that's about. That's what we were yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about. That, that was yes. it, yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, then this is, this is something that you could probably uh, Google and get some pretty decent information about. So, uh, say you were uh, waking up at two in the morning. Um, and so based on the circadian rhythm, the uh, between the hours of 1 and 3 a.m. is the time that your liver does its healing. So between 1 and 3 a.m., if you're popping awake, that could be an indication that your liver needs some support. Or if you're still awake. Or if, well, if you're still awake, your poor liver doesn't stand a chance right. of doing its healing or get, having its healing work mm -hmm. happen if you're up on Facebook watching this show at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> then... Um, your liver is kind of getting shortchanged okay. because between those hours, your liver needs to, to do its healing. Mm -hmm. um, so waking up in the middle of the night um, or at certain times of the night could be an indication that that particular system that is supposed to be healing during that time needs some support. Okay. Yes. And so how does that work with people who work overnight? It's tough for people who work at night. Okay. Because they're, the time that they're actually supposed to be sleeping, they're awake. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a challenge. And, you know, there are people who could come in to see me and say, well, you know, I work this crazy shift or oh, my shifts change. Right. You know, and in that case, we would look at some things that they could do to support themselves because there's nothing that they can do about being up okay. at 3 a.m. Right. Right. Right how they make their money or make right. a living yeah. or yeah. support themselves. Right. right. You know, people who, you know, police officers and firefighters, people, you know, who work shifts. Doctors, nurses. Doctors, nurses. Right. Yeah, people who work those kinds of shifts just need some other way to support themselves. Again, we, we're looking at the whole picture. Okay. So I, I will walk through your entire day with you. And we will look at your, your history, your medical history, your family history. Um, and kind of take a look at the whole picture so that we know exactly what we need to address and, um, and how to okay. address it. What makes it easier for you? Are you a tea drinker? Do you love to sit in front of your computer and sip on a cup of tea? Or do you really not have time to do that? Do you just not like tea? So what form do we need to we'll have coffee. you take your <laughs> other than your coffee? Okay. And we could talk about, we could work on your coffee cravings mm -hmm. as well. But, you know, what form would be the most convenient for you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are different forms, and I know, we, you know, we are all going to talk about that, but there are different forms of herbs. So for people who say, you know, I don't want to pop a bunch of pills, there, you know, pills aren't the only way okay. to get their supplements. When you go to a doctor, if you say, well, you know, I don't want pills, you know, what are you going to get? Either a shot, you probably get a shot of some type, yeah. And that's 
if that particular drug is available right. in an injection. Right. You know, and, you know, people say people taking, you know, taking insulin, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, people who, you know, they don't have a lot of choices, you know, right. for, you know, it's either um, injections or a pill. Right. So, but what if there was a blend of tea that you could drink to support um, your blood sugar levels to, to help stabilize your, and there is, mm -hmm. to help stabilize blood sugar. Um, you know, you have other options. You can take uh, herbs in different forms uh, to support yourself. Um, and so you're not limited to just taking a bunch of pills. And it's also great for children. Herbal medicine is great, great for children using it in different forms because a lot of children can't swallow them. Can't swallow I was going to ask you about the kids because I was going to ask you, at what age do people start doing herbs? Birth. Okay. Yes. Birth. There are, there are very mild uh, teas. There's a woman uh, named Rosemary Gladstar who has written uh, several books about um, herbal healing uh, specifically for women, specifically for children. Um, Rosemary is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually have one of her books, um, and I think it's called, or it, may, it may be called Herbal healing for children or herbal medicine for children, very simple things like catnip tea, um, things that you could, uh, um, you can give a baby tea, you can put it in a bottle, mm -hmm. um, but teas for colic and teas for Just colds. Just no sugar. And yeah, right, of course. Um, but teas for, you know, colic and, and, and uh, um, even, you know, skin and colds and flus and things that really su would support a baby um, and, and help them to, um, to feel, not only feel better during that cold or, or whatever, you know, the problem is, but also to help them, you know, their bodies to heal from it. Mm. So you can use, you know, the wonderful thing about herbs is that there are so many ways that you can take them. Right. Um, that you're not limited to pills okay. or shots. 